the potential is there. Uh, here again is our, you know, that same average pasture I showed you before. Now I want to pull out a couple of individual farms and show you how they did over the course of the year, just so that we can look at a couple of concepts. Uh, this was the, the McCormick farm, and it was one of our, our lower uh, alkaloid farms for most of the season. And that's all relative, of course, but it, I mean, remember all those dots that were on there? This is one that tracked a little bit lower. Uh, what do you think might be responsible for this spike here in early, early to mid-fall? What might David have done back here in August uh, to cause that kind of a spike? <coughs> yeah. Is that right, David? Yeah. Of course, we didn't have any moisture we, all summer either. So. We, we did, did not have any moisture all summer. That, that brings up a, a whole other point, you know, drought. Plants not doing well, you know, those, those toxin levels are going to be, you know, kind of maintained at a lower level. But, so what we saw here is, uh, you know, a rapid increase in alkaloid content because that plant, you know, experienced a, a big jump in growth. Now we look at another farm that tracked a good bit higher throughout the season. Uh, you know, it did kind of show the opposite of what the McCormick farm did here in fall. But it started out very high and, and stayed very high and, and was one of the highest that we saw. And what do you think he might have done back here in spring that might have caused that? Not poultry. Someone said poultry. They put nitrogen on. I mean, that's... So there's many, many factors. And uh, I just pulled out those couple of farms because that was those were the two cases where nitrogen was used. So I think it's pretty evident uh, that when that plant's doing well, you, know, you can see increased alkaloid levels. A visual representation of this, or example, this is a field that is probably, what, five, ten minutes from here. This is one that we was in our study. And we took half the field, and the farmer bush hogged that, that one half about May 15th, when the, the seed heads was, were just starting to be visible, and that knocked all the seed heads out, and we got this great leafy green vegetative regrowth. You know, we did it early enough that we caught some rain, and I was thinking, this is great. You know, this, the nutrient content of this was much higher, and I'm waiting to get those alkaloid results back. I'm like, this is going to be great. This is, you know, what most of our recommend, recommendations tell us is to keep things vegetative. But actually, um, the opposite was true. So this was a 3,300 uh, parts per billion. This old mature portion of the pasture was 17, 14 parts per billion. Now you could argue, well, yeah, there's seed heads here and the animals can come through and nip those off and you possibly see much higher toxicity when, than with this portion of the pasture. But that's not the real point. The point is that even with, it's still very high, I mean, 3,300. It's very high We're, when compared to that 500 uh, threshold level. So kind of the second conclusion is that practices that result in better grass growth can lead to increased toxicity, which is awful. I mean, that's a paradox. I mean, what do you do? 